Hey, welcome back to Curiosity Hub. I'm Ollie Hubbard. This week, I was having a glass of milk and all of a sudden, I just realized how are two thirds of adults lactose intolerant? Because when they were a baby, they probably relied solely on breast milk and it has lactose in it. So how are two thirds of all adults now lactose intolerant? So this bothered me for a while, but eventually I found the answer. So first, what is lactose? Well, lactose is a carbohydrate made up of two sugars, glucose and galactose. So they come together and form lactose. The only problem is lactose is huge and it can't fit through your gut lining and get into the bloodstream. So your body needs to produce an enzyme or protein called lactase and lactase splits lactose into its two sugars, glucose and galactase. And then they can pass through the gut lining and get into your bloodstream. Now the genetic instructions for making lactase are in a gene called LCT, but there's another gene called MCM6 and it controls whether LCT's instructions are read or not. So it really determines whether lactase is produced. And so we call it a regulatory gene. It's kind of like the gatekeeper of the instructions. So most mammals produce lactase as babies, but then stop when they finish suckling. So what's happening? Well, MCM6, the gatekeeper or the regulatory gene, allows LCT to be read and lactase to be produced. But then when the mammal stops suckling, LCT gets locked up. The regulatory gene comes in and prevents the instructions from being read. So no more lactase. And several thousand years ago, that's exactly what happened for us as humans as well. After we stopped suckling, no more lactase. But then something changed. We think that humans started to leave the nomadic lifestyle around 12,000 years ago and probably first settled around modern day Turkey. Now it didn't take long for us to domesticate things like goats and sheep and then after about 500 years, we think we had domesticated cattle and pigs. This kind of domestication reached into where modern day Romania and Hungary are about seven and a half thousand years ago. And it reached into where modern day Britain and Africa are about 6,000 years ago. Although it's hard to know for absolute sure. However, we do know that this change in domestication corresponds to a genetic mutation in the MCM6 regulatory gene. So the genetic mutation meant that the LCT gene continued to be read and lactase continued to be produced well into adulthood, meaning someone was tolerant of lactose. And this Genetic mutation occurred several times in Europe and Africa within herding populations. And then the mutation spread. But why? Well, let's run through the numbers. In the time it takes a cow to raise a calf, it produces 200 kilograms of extra milk without harming the development of the calf. So that's 200 kilograms of energy rich milk. So if you can then drink that milk rather than kill the cow, you have a sustainable renewable source of energy that no one else has access to. That is a huge advantage. So today the areas surrounding where those original mutations occurred have the highest rates of lactose tolerance because they've had the longest amount of time for those genes to spread through the populations. Whereas places that are geographically far away just haven't had that time and so they don't have the same rates of lactose tolerance. And you can see that in the statistics. So 99% of Dutch and Swedish people can happily drink milk because they naturally produce lactase. Only 50% of French, Arab and Spanish people can, but then only 5 to 10% of the Asian population naturally produces lactase and can happily drink milk. So let's do our own experiment. 
If you feel comfortable, comment where your ancestry is from and then just whether you can drink milk or not and we'll see whether our data agrees with the statistics. However, it does need to be said that it's not super simple. I mean, some people who don't naturally produce lactase themselves can still process small amounts of lactose because their gut bacteria in the large intestine does produce lactase. Um, but often this process can have some nasty, smelly side effects. But hold on, if all of this relies on a specific genetic mutation happening in the exact right spot at the exact right time and in the exact right way, the chances of that are essentially zero. But it did happen, and not just once but multiple times, independently and in isolated places. And I mean, why was lactase production even turned off in the first place if it provided such a massive advantage? Well, the answers are in this book. So subscribe if you want to catch them next week and we'll be going through them. In fact, we're actually near 200 subscribers. So it would be really awesome if you could share this video and we could get up there. I know 200 isn't really much, uh, but it means a lot to me, and um, you guys are what make this worthwhile, and um, you know, it, it does mean a lot, so thanks so much for your support. If you are interested in how the hip is going, uh, it's doing well, it's, it's healing well. I'm gonna go for my first run this week since the injury, um, and then hopefully the March Marathon in Sydney is looking good um, so good news there but um, apart from that I hope you're doing well and as always stay curious thanks <laughs> <laughs>